Okay, this has been a long time coming. Welcome to part 65 of the haul truck build. The Ford F750 1974 haul truck build. Now you're going to say to yourself, why the hell is he showing me the back of a international if you don't know what it is? If we're going into a, the haul truck build for a 1974 Ford F750. Well, I got kind of pulled off of working on this. This is the main reason that I kind of pulled off of this, off of the the haul truck build, is because of this and some other things that were going on. Um, I got pulled off of it. But we're going to get back into it because I've kind of gotten delayed on doing some stuff on this. There is something that I'm going to be doing on it, but we're not going to discuss it in this video. This video is going to be about the haul truck build. And um, so let's jump into that and we'll review some things that have happened. For those of you that are new to this series, um, I will kind of go through some things on the truck um, that I've been thinking about since the last video and we'll go from there. Um, kind of review it, bring you up to date for those of you who are new, kind of bring you into the build. Okay, in my last shop update, um, the shop update of 421, I, I uh, the welder broke. I had been fixing or building the dunnage rack for the bottom of the international, and, and the welder broke. And as I said in the video, I took it in uh, to have it uh, tested for, uh, to see what the, was wrong with it. They were going to load test it, stuff like that, to see what was wrong with it. So that part of the project is kind of put off. Um, in the previous clip, I showed you that it was snowing outside and stuff like that. So um, I just wanted to bring you over here to the haul truck. The last, well, it's been ongoing ever since I taken the dashboard apart, taking the inside apart and kind of test fitted the engine into it um, saw that I had to make a little bit of a doghouse to to get around the head when the head goes on to the engine from where it sits <clears throat> but the, the other issue is that um, I, I've got a lot of things that I need to put in here. There's going to be a lot more switches, a lot more gauges than was originally equipped in in this 1974 F750 Ford cab. So again, I and I've mentioned this in previous videos. Pulling off of this to do other things, I'm always kind of thinking about it, reflecting on it, thinking about how I'm going to do it. So the way the dash is laid out and the way the cab is laid out originally is not conducive of what I want to do with it. It gauges to get the stuff that I need in here or want in here the way it's laid out. So I've actually been thinking about well maybe maybe this is the wrong cab for the build. Um, I, I actually gave thought to going out to see if I could find like a cab off of something else, a cab off of a truck, um, like a Kenworth or a Peterbilt or something like that. Um, oh, the old school cab, where it's not the sleeper isn't molded into the new uh, into the new where the sleeper is molded into the new style cab. The seat in the old style, it was separate from the cab. It was a, a 
it was attached to it. There was a boot in the opening, and it was attached to it. But it was a separate item. You could separate the two pieces. I don't want to go that route. This, this thing is kind of based on this old style Ford cab, but man, I've, I've got to, to be able to do it, I've got to make some modifications to the dashboard. And kind of what the hang up is, is I really didn't want to destroy the look of the old thing, but then again, I need to add some stuff to it. So how I'm gonna do that, I'm, I'm still unsure of it. I, I really am still unsure of it. There would be a lot of things that would have to be done. Um, I, I had kind of mocked up this panel and it's kind of faded, but the round circles are the gauges that I was thinking about. And this, uh, th these rectangulars, uh, rectangle pieces on the other side were switch pods that could go in there. But I, I'm not really sure there's a brake lever that's got to come up out of here. Um, I, I kind of wanted to go with that old school original brake lever. I'm not sure if you remember it, but uh, after I'm done with this clip, I'll, I'll dig it out and show it to you. I, I kind of wanted to keep as much of it authentic as I could, and that brake lever is kind of cool. It's really old school, kind of cool. Um, but there's a lot that's got to be done. so. I, I, I'm not really sure how to I, I incorporate all of this stuff without destroying the dash. Um, you know, I've got this brake lever that's going to stick up here. What? Are, what? Are, where, how do I build this up out of there? I might be able to build something up out of here and get it above the brake lever. Um, and, and incorporate stuff into it, but probably this dash would have to be redone. Um, the, like the heater um, control, let's call it a module, the heater control unit would have to be probably relocated somehow or maybe incorporated into whatever I was going to build into it. Um, Then I took the dash pod out that had the speedometer or tachometer, had heat and oil gauges in it, um, but there wasn't, you know, I, I kind of like to keep that original or keep the original look to it. Maybe I can put different gauges into that that module. And, and keep the original look, just that the gauges inside of it, the speedometer, tachometer, get those gauges would be new style gauges or gauges that I can use to incorporate with the diesel engine. Again, the original truck was a gasoline engine. So there's a lot of work, a lot of thought that's got to go into this, and I, I have to make a decision, either you're going to try and keep the dashboard as, as original as possible, or you're going to have to kind of rework it and destroy the original look to um, get it to incorporate the stuff that you need to put into this truck in there. But uh, so. Uh, the other thing that I was thinking about, and I think that I've mentioned this before, this hump irritates me. There's a lot of room between the bottom of this floor pan and uh, the top of the transmission, the frame members, stuff like that. I'd like to get this thing out of there. Now, this probably would have to stay, but what I was thinking about doing is cutting it out this floor out and, and making it straight across there as much as possible. I, I would keep this original um, firewall in here, 
except for the where I have to build the doghouse around there, but maybe I could uh, flatten this thing out. And that would, there's two reasons why. It would make it more convenient to mount the seats in here, but it would also give me greater room. It's the way it's laid out with this hump in there with the shifter and everything to get out of the seat and get back in between the seats into the sleeper is going to be kind of a contortionist type of um, thing. You're, you're going to have to uh, be squatted down and stepping over stuff. If I could get that floor as, as straight as possible, that would help probably. But let me shut you off. I'll, I'm going to show you that brake lever, and I, I'm going to be thinking about this while I'm kind of down with the international and the welder and stuff. So um, let me shut you off. I'll show you that brake lever. And so here is that brake lever. <clears throat> now this is an original equipment in this truck. Um, as you can see, at that slot, it goes where that slot is over there but it was original equipment in the truck now if i do do the floor redo do the floor redo the floor that brake lever doesn't have to go in that original position i might be able to get it like over beside the trans or the uh, stick for the transmission more you know like on the other side of it right over there which would give me some room up there to maybe um, put the instruments, the switches and gauges and stuff that I wanted. But um, again, I, I need to think about this. So um, if you don't recall, or if you're new to this uh, haul truck build, I have switched the axles out. Now, um, I, I switched that rear axle out mainly because I wanted, uh, well, I, I needed a different gear ratio in it. Um, the original truck was a gas engine. It was a, uh, it was intended to be a fire truck ever since it was built. Um, it was, uh, sent right from Ford to uh, the American La France, I think, built the uh, fire truck, uh, sent directly to them. So it was always intended to be a fire truck. It was, I think it was always intended to be a tanker. Um, it had a big tank on it. So it was uh, a tanker truck for the fire department. It had um, five something I think it was 525 535 gear ratio in the back of it and that would have never worked it w absolutely never have worked with a diesel engine which has low rpm so I I needed to change that rear axle because of the gear ratio I wanted to get a different type of um, suspension on it and I, I found that gear, uh, that rear end, uh, with 390 gears and disc brakes on it, um, down south, I think it was in North Carolina or something at a salvage yard in North Carolina, and I happened to be making a haul down that way, so I just, uh, after the haul, I uh, went over the scrap yard. Uh, I, let's not call it a scrapyard, let's call it a, a salvage place um, because that's what they did. Uh, and I picked that axle up and brought it back. But um, one of the things that I have to had to contend with is there was no parking brake on it. Um, the disc, this type of disc brake doesn't incorporate a parking brake into it like new style brakes do. Um, like with my Ram, uh, there's a, in the uh, rotor, there's an inside hub with a parking brake assembly in it. This doesn't have that. So what I had to do is 
a lot of times parking brakes are incorporated into the drive shafts or into the drive unit uh, assembly. So I found this parking brake um, that could be adapted to the front of the hub. Um, and that's what that uh, shifter is going to, or I'm sorry, not the shifter, but that brake, parking brake handle is going to be going to. So, um, yeah, let me, uh, again, start getting back into this and just kind of reappraising where I'm going to go with this thing as far as the cab, the dashboard, stuff like that, the floor. Um, you start getting back into it. I, I've got to uh, get this, um, probably this cab off if I'm going to do that figure out how I'm going to do it to get it uh, fit in there if I'm going to redo this floor. But yeah, got to figure out where I left off and where I'm going with this thing and we'll bring you back. Okay, I've got you over here and this is the original instrument cluster that was in the truck. Um, now, in the previous clip, I said something about a tachometer being in there. I pulled this back out. I really haven't looked at this thing in a long time, and uh, apparently there was no tachometer in it. So, anyways, what my... Uh, I kind of originally wanted to keep this as original as possible. Keep the dash is original as possible so that would have meant using reusing this instrument cluster now my my intention was is the way it was laid out when you looked at it from the inside before i took it apart it looked like there were separate gauges in here well there is separate gauges but they're not a atypical gauge um so this thing could actually be pulled out and probably um, the standard two and a sixteenth inch gauge put in place of that thing. Um, and this was the speedometer, um, but it's a mechanical speedometer, as you can see. Um, actually, it's one of the old type speedometers where you could have gone in there and changed the numbers back again if you were selling a car. Um, what they did is in these places, I'm assuming, I, I don't know what these places for, I'm assuming that it, probably a tachometer was an option and a tachometer would have gone in one of those panels on a truck. Um, but they put a battery kill switch in this side, they put an hour meter in it, and uh, yeah, this is kind of why I got the truck originally. Again, I'm not a real big Ford fan, but um, it's got 16,000, what, 203 miles on it. Those, and uh, this hour gauge, this was probably added maybe later, but um, yeah, what is it, uh, 366 hours on it. Um, So originally my intention was to is try and keep that as original as possible and that's kind of why I wanted, there isn't a lot of room in it. Um, I mean I'd like to be able to keep that hour gauge and, and stuff like that. Um, you've, you've got fuel, I, um, temp alternator, oil pressure in there. <clears throat> <clears throat> so maybe I could get four gauges into there. Well, if you include the hour gauge, and you could probably take that battery disconnect switch out of there and um, put that switch in another location and get another gauge in there. But the speedometer, it can't be left that way. I mean, it's a mechanical speedometer, and trying to find a hookup for a mechanical speedometer could be next to impossible. I, I, but then again, I'm not really sure if they make something. Maybe they make a, kind of an electronic sending unit 
that has you can attach something to the back of an old mechanical speedometer and have a, an electronic sending unit like some kind of a, a DC motor that would go on the back of that and have an electronic um, sending unit that came up and fed it and synchronize the exact the speed to that uh, drive that would attach to the back of that I'm not sure you know again s s sometimes there there's people that do this stuff all the time restore stuff build stuff and do it all of the time and they kind of know sources they they know what's available what's not available um, and they're a better adept at finding or, or being able to contact them sources here I I you know I come up with ideas and then I've got to find sources for this stuff and um, sometimes when you're in the business or you do this as uh, you've done it for a long time you know the sources and and it's just a matter of contacting the sources to see if things are available here I'm trying to come up with ideas and find sources you know but um, anyways, so there's that di dash pod. This video is kind of turning into a re-explanation of this build. Um, so I'm going to probably shut you off here, and I'm going to take you over and show you. I talked about changing the axles out. There was another reason for changing the axles out besides the ones that I detailed about. Um, the gear ratio in the rear axle. I also changed the front axle out because of the wheels that were on it and what I'll do is I'll throw a pick and pick uh, somewhere in here and um, again of that thing and you can see it's the old um, split ring type of wheels on it where um, there was I, I think it was five um, spokes that came out cast iron they were cast iron wheels five spokes come out and they were bolted those spokes were bolted to the inner part of the rim um, I'll take you over and show you the old tires I don't have the old hubs because I got rid of the axles but um, I'll take you over and show you I still have the tires off of it and show you how that those spokes bolted on here we are at the back of the haul truck and this is a rim that the new style rim it's called a bud rim um, that goes on it but I'll take you over and show you the old wheels and um, the, again they were the split ring type of wheels that uh, um, you had to adjust them when you put them on so there is the inside of it and again you can probably see the spoked locations where they kind of bolted that rim bolted to it was kind of a clamp mechanism and again what I'll do is I'll throw a pick and pick over there showing you the truck with the uh, original rim on it um, but I'll uh, say I've got another wheel that's over in the light better so that I can show you better and here we are at that other rim and again you can see the location so there was one two three four five five spoke on that uh, old cast iron hub um, and it attached to the attached to these rims and what what you would do is again it was like a clamping mechanism and you would bolt it on there but then you would have to spin the tire um, to make sure that you had them drawn down right because it would make the tire uneven um, so you would have to go back through and, and even it out uh, the torque on each one of these maybe loosen one up tighten another down um, before you could drive it so one of the things that I wanted to talk about and is a could it be well it is an issue with this truck is the truck came with manual steering there is no power steering on this truck now they did make the truck with power steering 
but it didn't come on this truck. So um, I think it's probably a given that I'm going to need a power steering unit for this truck. Now, the, the issue is, and I'll take you around there and show it to you in a minute. Um, the issue is the um, where the steering box is, is located. There isn't, doesn't appear to be a lot of options for it, but let me bring you back to that when I take you into the front and show you the steering box. So the other thing, let me just expand upon the power steering a bit. As we, if people didn't know that used to drive trucks or cars that did not have power steering, once the car is moving or the truck is moving, it's fairly easy to steer. In some cases, it's, depending on the vehicle, it's almost as easy to steer as with power steering. But th that does not apply when the truck is stopped. When you, um, and backing up in a truck stop is going to require you to have power steering. Now, not I could, could be done without power steering, but um, if any of you have ever been to a truck stop or tried to back a large trailer into a 10-foot uh, space in a truck spot, uh, stop with um, two rigs on either side of you, and a small alleyway to get, try to maneuver it back into, you'll understand the need for the power steering. But anyways, um, the other thing that I would like is the truck only came with a heater. There was no air conditioning in the truck. I'm not really sure what I could do to take that ex existing heating um, units that are provided uh, with it, uh, the ductwork I'm talking about, the ductwork and adapting that to air conditioning. Um, or I'm not even sure if I can run a uh, com uh, air conditioning condenser off of the engine, uh, get a pulley to run it off of. Imagine I could, but trying to locate it, trying to figure out what the belt is, trying to figure out what the brackets for the air conditioner is, could be another thing. So the other possibility is having an air conditioner in the um, sleeper and just letting that cool the cab of the truck while I'm driving. But um, those things have to, were gonna have to be explored. Um, so when I was talking about the dashboard too, I as long as we're on the subject of the inside of the truck, um, I was talking about that speedometer. Now I do know, I, I said that it would be nice to uh, get a speedometer that you can connect to on the transmission, this Eaton Fuller 10 speed transmission in it. Um, on the transmission, there is an, a, uh, an electric port for an electric outlet uh, for connection to the speedometer. What, what I would need is something that would connect to that um, and, and drive that unit. The other thing that is available is speedometers that are run off GPS. I know that you can get a it's got like a GPS sensing unit with a, like an antenna on it. Um, or you, I think it's actually capable of being hooked up to other GPSs that drives the speedometer. Um, but I don't know how reliable those things are. I've, I've never, done, never knew anyone that used them so I have no idea of what the reliability is. Um, but anyways, again, since this is kind of a brief overview of the thing, that's kind of what I'm dealing with, what I'm doing. Um, I'm gonna take you around and I'll show you the power or the steering box on it and what the issue would be. 
So here is the steering box and as you can see what they've done is they've designed the frame around that steering box. Now I've kind of seen pictures of the power steering unit and it's similar to this um, but it, again it's power steering and um, probably I would have to get one of them. Again, this is the opening down through that uh, feeds the steering wheel up there. Um, bringing something out at a different angle and mounting it out farther could be an issue. I'm not saying that it can't be done because a lot of trucks have the steering box uh, forward of the front axle where this one is behind the rear axle a lot of trucks have it forward of the front axle but um, that would probably require some like u-joints in the, in this steering column steering column shaft let's put it that way but anyways, um, those are some of the problems that I'm dealing with and some of the things that I've got to overcome. Um, it will get done. It's just a long drawn out process because again, you know, I'm, I'm trying, coming up with ideas and having to find out whether those ideas are reality. If somebody makes something that will cover those ideas and then try and find somebody that supplies that. Um, so it, it's a long drawn out process and it can take a long time because if you run into an issue where you come up with an idea and only to find out that um, your idea can't isn't made the devices to handle your idea aren't made then you've got to go back to the drawing board per se and come up with another idea but anyways, that's going to do it for this uh, part of the truck build. Um, next time, probably work will be being done maybe on that cab floor.